tour. Alice and I, a number of years ago, we were preparing to go back overseas again, and we had something to do uh, with a, a government agency. I really don't recall what it was. We had to take care of filling out some forms. And knowing what it's like to go to a government office where people are lined up and, you know, it's a bureaucratic kind of situation. We went early in the morning before it opened to be online and get in and get it taken care of. Well, we got there early and yet in front of this building, I mean, there was a line of people, right? And they're all waiting for the, and it was a few minutes before the doors opened. So they're all standing outside waiting for the, for open. And there are two policemen outside this government building and they're walking up and down the line and they're saying to everybody, you know, first of all, there's no smoking in the building and you can't have any weapons in the building. If you have any weapons, do not bring them into this building. So I called one of the officers over and I said, listen, I've got a problem. He said, what are you talking about? I said, well, I have a weapon and I can't, I, I, I can't put it down. I can't. And he said, what are you talking about? Carry it with me all the time. I said, time. I carry it with me all the time. I said, I have the sword of the Lord. I have the word of God and I can't put it down. And it's like his first his reaction was like, what? 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 And then. He calls over the other cop. He says, wait, you got to hear this. You got to hear this. <laughs> and it turns out that they were both Christians. Yes. <laughs> so it's got to be a reality. This is, you know, our faith and the word of God is not some fable that we can play with. It is, yeah. it is the reality of our lives. And it has to be the guide for our lives. Thy word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. It guides every step of our life. And when we are guided by the word of God, you know, did Jesus say or did he not say that it's the Holy Spirit who will be sent to lead you into all truth? So when you couple that word of God with the spirit of God, okay? And when you couple the spirit of God with the scriptures, it becomes the word of God. Yes. That becomes your God. <clears throat> and you know what it says in Romans? Those who are led by the spirit, they are the sons, the children of God. Coincidentally to this? No, because you know what? You can't be a peacemaker without being led by the Spirit of God. And when you are led by the Spirit of God, you are a child of God. That's that's the manifestation. Okay. Now, you know, most respected Bible commentators, I'm talking about Barnes, Henry, Matt, uh, you know, Matthew Henry, Gill, Wycliffe, etc., etc., they state that the primary focus of the verse here, for the ruler does, you know, he has a sword, is to Bring about bringing peace between men. And I say again that because there can be no peace between men till there's peace by God, those men have to be have the focus of Jesus, his teaching is what will bring the message of peace. Okay. Do I sound like I'm trying to pick on somebody when I say, think about what I what I quoted? And it's a quote. This is I'm not making this up. When Pope Francis went over to Israel. And tried to bring the Palestinians and the Israelites together and said, well, we've got to put aside the thing that divides us. And the thing that divides them is Jesus Christ. You can't have peace without Jesus Christ. It'll never happen. I want to tell you something. I have found peace with a number of Muslims because they've accepted Jesus Christ. And you want to know something? They're not my, I don't treat them like they're enemies if they haven't accepted Jesus Christ. I, I don't, I'm not going to bring hatred to any man. All right. But the fact of the matter is, you'll never have, you'll never be able to have that relationship with anybody. You'll never have a relationship with anybody without conflict and warfare, unless you are both agreed on the saving power, the atoning work of Jesus Christ on the cross. And that goes between a man and a woman who want to get married. If one of them is saved and one of them is not, you know what? You're headed for warfare. You're headed for warfare. It'll be a battle. Absolutely. You can't have a peaceful relationship. Now, that doesn't mean you can't have a loving... We Christians have the power to love our enemies. Yes. That doesn't mean that your enemies have the power to love you back. Mm -hmm. Because, like Paul said in these perilous last days, men will be lovers of self. They'll be lovers of money. They'll be lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. They're going to be self-focused. The first thing I want to tell you about being a Christian is you got to learn to deny yourself. Your focus has to start with Jesus Christ, and then from there, where does it go? You, you love other people. It flows out. That's the, that's love. the great the new commandment that you love others as, yeah. as, as He has, as He's loved us. Right? If anyone is in Christ, if anyone is in Christ, He's a new creature. The old things have passed away. 
Behold, new things have come. Now all these things are from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. It's got to be through Christ. Through Christ.